Hey, you beautiful people, and welcome to another Get Jervis video. Now, you know I love synthesizers, but you might not know that I also love sampling almost as much. Rewinding back to my childhood and the BBC produced technology show Tomorrow's World showed us the fair light back in 1980, which caused the child Jervis to sit bolt upright along with others on their sofas. I remember also a few years later being blown away by art of noise and close to the edit. So much so that I rushed out immediately and bought the single, which actually took about an hour thanks to the local Crosby bus service. And then in 1985, it happened again with Paul Hardcastle's 19, causing yet another slow trip to Wrexham's Phase 1 record store. In fact, the following year, my friend David Williams brought into school his Casio SK-1, and we sampled ourselves swearing and making fart noises. So, a few years later, in the early 90s, when building my first studio, I was desperate to get a sampler. And at the time, I worked in a little music shop in Oswestry, which suddenly took stock of a lot of instruments from ex-Renaissance vocalist and bassist John Camp, amongst which was an Akai X7000. And yes, I took that home to join my Prophet 600, Poly 800, SH101 and Boss DR550. Anyway, fast forward to today and we are thoroughly spoilt with such amazing samplers. The circuit rhythm I'm using today is battery powered for up to four hours, has an eight track sequencer, albeit mono tracks, with up to three minutes and 40 seconds of sampling time in a size that can fit in any rucksack. So, after spending some time with the self-same machine, sampling household items for a feature for Toman, uh, yeah, link there, um, I wondered what else I could sample to make music in, if you like, an unofficial follow-up. So today, we ask ourselves the question, can you make music from junk? Now, I had this amazingly grand idea to go out to a junkyard somewhere with a recorder and collect sounds, much like the video to close to the edit. Instead, I went straight to my recycling. Now, warning, this video contains items pulled straight from my recycling and may offend some. Beware. Also, this is not a tutorial, simply a tease or some misguidance for you to follow. So, dare you watch to see such filth? Stay tuned. Let's select uh, let's clear the first sample pad and we're going to put our kick drum on there. So, soft beater. It's worth spending a bit of time trying to get a good spot to create the sound. And obviously, if you've got a port there, that's where we're going to point at the mic or sleep off axis so it doesn't create too much wind. It's orange, so that means record. Right, let's hear what that sounds like. Save there. Uh, now, the start point can be adjusted. Don't forget to save. And there we go, it's our kick. Um, years ago, when I started getting into sampling, I heard tales of people using tin foil as a snare drum. So I thought, well, here's some, here's some tin foil. It just happened to be there. So let's try that. Clear that one. And I uh, might just fold it over because it seems to be, so you've got a bit of, bit of sort of hollow it out a bit, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay, you can see it taking shape. Okay, so snare. Now, what about hi hats? Um, <laughs> I haven't got one, but um, S Express used an aerosol. So I'm hoping that some bubble wrap. <laughs> might sound the same. Well, we can but try. It sounds more like a snare. Well, this is an exploratory mission that we're all on. Hopefully, you'll have a go at this yourself. Maybe not now, because you're watching this, but maybe later. Okay, so, um, oh, maybe. I'm gonna try that and we'll go 
anything you hit will make a sound like a percussion instrument. And there's so many ways of doing this, but how do you create a bass sound out of rubbish? Bearing in mind that we need a sound to resonate, I've got some laundry liquid. I mean, you obviously, you can get bigger ones than this, but uh, I've only got a little one here. So, again, we can pitch it down. Let's see how that works. Let me go record. It almost sounds like a log drum, doesn't it, or something? Right, let's try this one then. Definitely worthwhile auditioning before pressing that record. A third and final bottle. Not, no one's going to want that as a sample unless they're trying to replicate fire. Oh, that's an interesting sound. So we're still in plastic. Tell me about your childhood. Uh, did you ever get a rubber band over a box and twang it? I bet you did. <laughs> so, we've got drums, we've got percussion, we've got a bass line. What about some melody instruments? Where, where are we going to go for that? Tin foil. <laughs> Again, it's very percussive, isn't it? It fits the brief, right? <laughs> the brief is rubbish. <sighs> Food waste. We've got a parsnip and some carrots and some egg shells. Obviously, these are clean. Actually, the carrots technically aren't really Oh, that's, that's edible. I will eat that. Well, we're sampling, right? Don't ever forget how good a snack a carrot is. If this isn't an experimental episode, I don't know what is. So, let's stack it up. So, tin foil, remember, snare, eggshell. I'm thinking that the eggshell being hit with a spoon over the over that will give us a snare drum sound. If it doesn't, <clears throat> well, who knows? Some good sounds here.
I do hope you enjoyed that. But what did you think? Is there something I missed out? What's in your recycling that could have been turned into music? Have you ever sampled junk and added it to your tunes? You're invited to comment below. And while you're at it, if you do have a favourite sampler, old or new, perhaps it's a tracker, perhaps it's a circuit. Maybe something older like an Emu, Akai, Casio or Roland. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, I need you, if you don't already do so. And until the next time, don't throw it away. Sample it into sound. And the dish run away with the spoon.